Atlantic City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Nothing suits the lively pace of modern life better than Pepsi-Cola. Light, bracing, clean-tasting Pepsi. So think young, drink young. Say Pepsi, please, and get an extra carton of Pepsi-Cola. So go ahead and pick the drink that lets you drink young as you think. Yes, get the right one, the modern light one. Now it's Pepsi for those who think young. you were going to breed her. I was offered too good a price for her. Close to $100. Got it in my pocket. But you didn't need the money, did you? I got to buy you a ring. Oh, honey, the ring isn't important. We can get one later when we're settled. No, no. You're going to have a ring right off. You don't want people to think I'm too poor to buy you a ring now, do you? It isn't that, Tom. No, no, you just quit worrying. Everything's going to be all right. We are going to get married soon, ain't we? I hope so, Tom. Listen. Hmm? It's Paul. It's him and Roy Taylor. You know, that Roy Taylor follows him around like a shadow. Well, he's Paul's right-hand man, Tom. Yeah, I found that out the day Taylor talked your Paul into firing me. Well, look who's come a-calling. Linda, what's she doing here? Tom came here to see me, Pa, not you. Well, I give him credit for that much sense. Are you telling me I can't call on Melinda when I want? When I decide that, I'll show you, not tell you. Now, stop it, both of you. Pa, if you're going to act like this every time Tom comes out here, I'll meet him someplace else. Now, there's no need to fly off the handle, but i got to wonder about a man who spends all his time courting. Look, Mr. Miles, I know what you think of me. But I'm going to have my own ranch soon. And that's a whole lot better than taking wages from somebody else, if you ask me. Your own ranch? Huh? Why, sure, Mr. Miles. You're forgetting he owns two, three head of horses. I got six head, Taylor, and they're as good as any around. Well, they may be the best horses in the whole world, but that don't hardly make no ranch. He's got to start somewhere, hasn't he? Yeah, he sure does, but I wish he was in Texas doing it. Come on, Taylor. We've got work to do. Don't you mind him, Tom? You make out fine, a hard worker like you. Were you... No, Tom. That's all he wants is for you to start trouble here. Me start trouble? <laughs> Forget about them. They're just mad because they know they can't do anything about us. No. No, they can't, can they? Come on. I'll make you some coffee. All right. Fine. <laughs> Good 
Winchester? Ah, hello, Miss Kitty. Who are you staring at over there? Tom Parr. Toward that Taylor playing poker with Roy Taylor. Uh Uh-huh. You'd think he'd have better sense than that. Why? But Taylor goaded him into that game. Taylor's been having a big run of luck. Well, a run of luck can always stop with the next hand, Chester. Well, it ain't stopped yet. It's like poor old Tom about to lose his shirt. Tom's a nice boy. He just needs a little more growing up. Yeah. Melinda Miles seemed willing to wait for him. Oh, yeah. I heard he's been courting her. Uh-huh. Looks like Tom didn't do so good. He's leaving the table. Uh-uh. Oh, hello there, Tom. Huh? Oh, oh, Chester. Miss Kitty. Have a drink, Tom? No, no, thanks. On the house? No, thanks. It's getting late. I'm going to turn in. Didn't you do no good at all, Tom? No, I didn't, Chester. Now Taylor will go and tell old man Miles and... Melinda, too. They're lost all my money. I can just hear him. Well, you can get back at Roy Taylor the next time. That's right. I ain't worried about it, but right now I'm going to bed. <laughs> good night, Tom. Good night, Tom. Well, at least he's a good loser. Yeah, but it ain't going to help him with Melinda, and he knows it. Happened right in that alley, Mr. Dillon. Thought for to be there by now. You say Taylor won a lot of money at the Long Branch last night, huh? Yes, sir, but he'd give most of it to Bill Pence to put in the safe there. Any idea how much he kept on him? Well, I was right there, but I didn't watch too close. How about how much? Well, man, a little over $100, I'd say. All right, man, let us through. Oh, Give him a side. Give him over, Alvin. Let us through there. Hello, Matt. What do you think, Doc? Well, there's, there's nothing I can do for him. He's dead. Now, go through his pockets, Doc. Chester said he had some money on him. He might have been robbed. Oh, all right. All right, you men. Right, Taylor's dead. Uh, nothing you can do, so let's move on. Huh? Oh, boy. Well, it's just a doggone shame when a man can't walk down Front Street at night without getting himself murdered. Did you find anything, Doc? There's no money on him now, Matt. Robbed, huh? Murdered and robbed. It looks that way. Mr. Dillon, I hate to say this, but you know Tom Potter. Uh, sure, why? Well, sir, he lost his whole stake to Roy Taylor tonight. Uh, there were other men in the game. They lost two, didn't they? For sure, but there was already bad blood between Tom and Taylor. Oh, Harry Miles' daughter, you mean, huh? Moon, yes, sir. Oh, Chester, Tom Potter isn't the kind of man to do this. Well, now, it'll come up, Doc. You just wait and see. Well, I'll find Tom and talk to him tomorrow, but right now we better go get a wagon. A wagon? You mean you're going to take Taylor out to the ranch this time of night? I think Harry Miles would appreciate it, Doc. He and Taylor were pretty good friends. Miles ain't going to take this easy. No. I'll go get a wagon, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> listening is jam-packed into those new CBS Radio Network features heard throughout your listening week on this station, weekdays and weekends, a total of 43 times a week. Nuggets of information come to you as an exclusive network service in your area. Where you're listening now, the roster includes such five-a-week favorites as David Schoenbrunn's Your Man in Paris broadcast, Nancy Hunchman's A Woman's Washington, Zachary Scott with Man and Wife, Douglas Edwards' Sidelights, Alan Jackson's Information Central, and Personal Story. In the week to come, comedian Orson Bean will tell his personal story in his own words. A story of laughs and tears, of hits and misses, by the world's greatest living authority on the life of Orson Bean. Tomorrow through Friday, enjoy over this station Orson Bean's Personal Story and the rest of the timely, informative CBS Radio Network features now part of each day's listening right here. By heaven, Marshal, I won't stand for this. 
this. I'll find the killer sooner or later, Miles. I want him now. We know who he is. There's nothing can be done about it until morning. Well, if I'd been in town, something would have been done tonight. Maybe we done wrong bringing Roy's body out here. No, I didn't mean that. I appreciate what you've done. Roy belongs out here. Coffee's ready. Yeah, my, that sure does smell good. Chester, tell Melinda what you told me. Oh, well, now that don't mean nothing. Go ahead, Chester. She'll hear it anyway. Tell me, Chester. Well, my land, it ain't nothing, really. I... Well, Tom lost every dollar he had on him tonight playing poker with Roy Taylor. Oh. And then waited for him in the alley and murdered him to get it back. Now, Miles, nobody knows that. I know it, and that's enough. Chester. Yes, Mom? Were you in the game? Well, no, but I kindly watched it. What time did Tom leave the Long Branch? It was about midnight, I think. He said he was going to bed. And what time was Roy Taylor killed, Marshal? About 1.30. What are you driving at, Melinda? It's an hour's ride from here to Dodge, isn't it? That's right. At 1 o'clock, Tom Potter and I were standing right out there by the big oak talking. Now, look here, Melinda. It's true, Pa. And I'll swear to it in court. Marshal, I'll be riding into Dodge about noon tomorrow. Now, don't you believe your own daughter? We'll see. Tom couldn't have a better alibi. But look, Miles, I'll question him first thing in the morning. Anyway. I'll do my own questioning, Marshal, behind a six-gun. Now, you know better than that, Miles. Roy Taylor was a good friend of mine, Marshal. Nobody's going to shoot him down like that and get by with it. I'll find the man who did it. Well, good. I'll be at your office at noon. I want to see him. <laughs> Mighty pretty ring, Mr. Jonas. <laughs> Just got it in not more than a week ago. A hundred dollars, you say? Yeah. That's as low as I can go, Tom. All right, I'll take it. Oh, be right with you, Marshal. Well, oh, Marshal. Morning, Tom. Uh, want me to put the ring in a box, Tom? No, I'll take it as is. Here's your money. Uh, right. One hundred dollars, thank you. hundred dollars. Something wrong, Marshal? You went broke last night, didn't you? Oh. Oh, yeah, I see. I heard about Roy Tavo. He was robbed of a little over a hundred dollars, Tom. You know where I was, Marshal? Where? Well, now, you probably won't believe me, so you go out and ask Melinda Miles. She'll tell you. All right, Tom, but where did you get this money? I sold two of my horses this morning for $110. And who did you sell them to? George Rand. But he left town with them an hour ago. And he lives 75 miles north of here. I sold them over at the stable, Marshal. Moss Grimmick was there. Then you wouldn't mind walking over there with me, huh? Why should I? Oh, Mr. Jonas, don't say anything about this to anybody, will you? I want it to be a surprise. Why, of course not, Tom. Thanks. Let's go, Marshal. Churn up storm. Coming in here at noon today, expecting you to have the killer already locked up. You think he meant it when he said he'd kill Tom if you ever come courting Melinda again? I'm afraid he did, Chester. Did you tell Tom about it? Sure I did. For all the good it'll do. Oh, my heavens. What, what is it? Speak of the devil. Look down there. He's with Melinda. They're coming in here. Hello, Chester. Oh, Melinda. Huh? 
Marshal, we've been looking for you. Well, what's the trouble, Melinda? Her pa, that's what's the trouble. Well, what's he done? He came home and said he'd shoot Tom on sight if he came around the place again. Well, what are you doing in town? She come to find me, Marshal. She's got an idea, and it's a good one, too. Oh? I thought it all out, Marshal, and there's only one way to settle this business. And how's that? Tom's innocent. Pa told me you're convinced of it yourself. Well, I don't think any court would convict him. Then you've got to arrest him and have him tried. What? It's the only way, Marshal. He'll be found not guilty, and it'll put Pa to shame, and he'll have to leave us alone. You've got to do it, Marshal, right now. You agree with all this, Tom? Sure I do. Melinda's right. It's the only thing that'll work. You'll do it, Marshal, won't you? No. No, I, I, I can't do it. But, Marshal... I'm sorry, Melinda, but the law can't be used that way. Then you won't help us? I didn't say that. I've been doing some thinking. Maybe I'll come up with something. But meantime, you get back home. And, Tom, you stay away from there. I, I don't want any more killings. Come on, Melinda. I'll take you back to your horse. You give up awful easy, don't you? I didn't say I'd given up. Come on. Come on. Marshal. Okay. Goodbye, Goodbye. Tom. Chester. Yes, sir? I'm riding out of town for a couple of days. What? Keep an eye on things here, will you? Well, yes, sir, but by Jing, this sure is a fine time. You'd go horseback riding, all I can say. I need the exercise. <laughs> Everybody likes good news. Since this is true, wouldn't expanded CBS News broadcasts find greater favor with the vast CBS radio listening audience if they simply omitted bad news? There's a pretty obvious answer to that one, and it goes like this. Of course not. Expanded CBS News has only one object, to present all the important global news swiftly and without bias. This takes more than just good intentions. It takes thousands upon thousands of miles of complex communications links, hundreds of skilled newsmen. There's that matter of experience, too, the kind of experience only years can create. In a sense, expanded CBS News is a network within a network, a service acting around the clock to meet your need to know, to keep you informed of important events, no matter where they happen. For longer, stronger coverage of world happenings, it's expanded CBS News on CBS Radio. You can depend on it. together for? We decided to run away. I met Tom this afternoon near home. But her paw saw us, and he's right on our trail. He'll kill Tom. I know he will. You're a darn fool, Tom. Mr. Dillon told you to keep away from her. That don't help me now. You've got to do something, Chester. Well, I'll... All right. Get on inside the office, both of you. I'll lock you up and stand guard. He'll have to go through me first. Oh, thank you. Come on, Tom. Yeah, now, Wait. I don't rightly admire being shot like a rat in a trap. Well, I don't see you standing out in the open and facing him. Well, that's unfair. Well, I didn't say it was easy. Tom Potter. Now it's too late. You stand right where you are, boy. Pa, well, please. And I warned you what had happened. You can't. Now, now, wait a minute, Mr. Miles. Ain't going to be no killing around here. I don't aim to kill him here. I'm going to take him out on the prairie. Give him an even chance with me. No, you oh. ain't. I ain't even going to let you do that. You can't very well stop me, Chester. I'll... Oh, Mr. Dillon. What's going on here? Nothing you're going to stop, Marshal. He's about to kill Tom, Marshal. He's not going to kill anybody. Come here, Tom. I took a ride up to George Rand's. What? He told me to give you this. Why? You wanted to be sure you got your money. Well, no, it isn't mine. He doesn't owe me a thing. Yes, he does. A hundred and ten dollars. He said he'd pay you in a couple of weeks. You remember? Here it is. He paid me! 
me blast you. What is all this, Marshal? I remember Moss Grimmick saying he didn't actually see any money changing hands that day. Well, I'll be darned. Melinda, you got word into Tom about the alibi you'd set up for him, didn't you? Well, didn't you? Yes. The cook's helper. I, I woke him up and made him ride into town with a note before dawn. Melinda! Miles, I expect it was Tom who shot Roy Taylor after all. I knew it. I knew it all along. You know too much, you old... No, no, no you don't, Tom. Give me back. All right, uh, Chester. Take him in and lock him up. Yes, sir. Come on, Tom. Why, he was going to shoot me. You can be thankful he didn't, Miles. Melinda's going to be needing you now more than ever. You're right, Marshal. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God. Come on, Melinda. It's time we went home. This is Dennis James to make a point about reliable, effective Kellogg's All Brand. Repeat after me, please. What do you want when you need brand? What do you want when you need brand? Reliability. Reliability. Now, what do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? What do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? Reliability. Right. You see, Kellogg's All Brand is the reliable brand that millions depend on for the effectiveness they want. It's the real Battle Creek formula that brings you more brand bulk in every serving, more of the vital brand bulk that helps you keep regular. Kellogg's All Brand is also low in calories and mighty pleasant tasting. You can trust Kellogg's for that. The crisp toasted shreds have the kind of good brand muffin flavor that most folks are partial to. So next time you are shopping, get Kellogg's All Brand and you'll get reliability. That's what you get in Kellogg's All Brand. Reliability. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald. Stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston and adapted for radio by Frank Paris. Featured in the cast were Ann Whitfield, Sam Edwards, John Daner, and Vic Perrin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh, inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. This is the CBS Radio Network.